Hi everyone. In this session, we are going to deal with the old prison written by Judith Wright. It is a poem that comes under the first module, War and its Aftermath, of our text, Issues That Matter. So now I'll give you a very brief introduction to Judith Wright. Judith Wright was an Australian poet, environmentalist and campaigner for Aboriginal land rights. She lent her voice for upholding the rights of Aboriginal Australians. Aboriginal means existing in a land from the earliest before the arrival of colonists. Aboriginal Australians and environment are the major themes in her poetry. This is the picture of Trial Bay Gaul. Our poem revolves around this Gaul. Gaul means jail. Now let's move into the poem, The Old Prison. The whole poem is set in a melancholic tone. That means a sad tone, very sad tone. The poem is about a convict built jail by prisoners at Trial Bay. Trial Bay is an eponymous bay because it is named after a particular ship. Now I'll give you a brief historical context. In 1816, the ship named Trial wrecked near this bay because of a rebellion among the convicts who were in that ship. In 1879, work began on the construction of this goal, a place for confinement of prisoners for the purpose of using prison labor. And the jail was abandoned in 1903. During World War I, over 500 German soldiers were held here and it closed again in 1922. Now, we know our writer Judith Wright is an activist on a visit to this site, poet finds out that this prison got disintegrated due to strong winds and saline waves. She empathized with the prisoners who were housed there. The poet juxtaposes the plight of this goal, this particular jail, and the plight of despondent prisoners through this poem. We can just imagine their plight. They will be in a state of desolation and despondency and there will be a state of emptiness, loss of hope etc for sure as they are in an isolated melancholic existence far from their homelands. Now I will recite the poem out for you. The Old Prison The rows of cells are unroofed, a flute for the wind's mouth who comes with a breath of ice from the blue caves of the south. O oh, dark and fierce day, the wind like an angry bee hunts for the black honey in the pits of the hollow sea. Waves of shadow wash the empty shell bone bare, and like a bonnet sings a bitter song of air. Who built and labored here? The wind and the sea say, their cold nest is broken and they are blown away. They did not breed nor love each in his cell alone. Cried as the wind now cries through this flute of stone. Now, I'll give you a very detailed summary of each stanza. First, we can deal with the first stanza. The rows of cells are unroofed, a flute for the wind's mouth who comes with a breath of ice from the blue caves of the south. So, uh, from the first stanza itself, we get to know that the prison is in a disintegrated condition. The prison cells are without roof, so the wind is getting in and out of the cells very easily. The wind is clattering around the building, making a sound similar to that of a flute. Remember the recurring imagery of flute. They are living in cold conditions, extreme cold conditions, and the wind is so cold as if it is coming from Antarctica. That is, blue caves of the south. The glaciers of Antarctica is represented as blue caves. Now let's move on to the second stanza. O oh, dark and fierce day, the wind like an angry bee hunts for the black honey in the pits of the hollow sea. 
See, see the beginning of this stanza. Oh, dark and fierce day. The tone itself is melancholic and sad. It is full of sadness. The prisoners are living in extreme weather conditions. The wind moves violently like an angry bee. We know it's a coastal area, so it will be really windy. Just like a bee which stings really painfully, the chillness of the wind pave way for the poor living conditions of these prisoners. The prisoners are called black honey by Judith Wright in this stanza. It also represents the greed of the mutineers whom we saw in the ship trial. The wind is angrily searching for the prisoners even in the depth of the ocean, of the hollow sea. So, the continuous torture suffered by these prisoners is portrayed through this stanza. Now, let's move on to the third stanza. Waves of shadow wash the empty shell bone bare and like a bonnet sings a bitter song of air. Now, from the beginning, waves of shadow. It may be that the clouds that hurry past cast a dark ghost-like shadow on ruined prison. Just like the wave washing an empty shell, leaving behind nothing, the waves and saline winds destroy the prison completely. This can be seen as representative of the empty feelings prisoners experienced in utter despair. A skeleton kept in a closet will have a lot of things to say about life of that person, his experiences, death, etc. Just like that, the prison remains proclaims the plight of these prisoners. As air blows through these cells or these unroofed cells, it produces powerful sounds that echo wind passing through a flute. These sounds will be really sad and eerie sounds. That's why it is bitter. Now, let's move on to the fourth stanza. Who built and labored here, the wind and the sea say. Their cold nest is broken and they are blown away. The poet wonders who built the prison. Only wind and sea could witness that process and events that took place while building this prison. The prison is depicted as a cold nest as there is no warmth and security. Now, the prison is in disintegrated condition because of strong winds and saline waves. And the prisoners are nowhere to be seen now. The prisoners are compared as birds who flew away from this unsafe nest. Image of desolation and despondency is clearly portrayed through these lines by Judith Wright. Now let's move on to the fifth stanza. They did not breathe nor love, each in his cell alone. Cried as the wind now cries through this float of stone. We know the prisoners are in solitary confinements. So they couldn't love or mate or reproduce. The prisoners might have cried alone in their cells, thinking about their families, their hopes, their dreams, etc. Wright's repetition of flute motif ensures the wind evokes the solitary wail of the prisoners. So, the wind echoes the sad cry of these prisoners. Now, let's move on to the analysis of this poem. The whole poem is set in a melancholic tone, as I have told you earlier. The theme of the poem is based on war, that is for sure. And the rhyme scheme is A, B, C, B. It is rich in images. We have seen, we have seen that this poem is rich in images. Judith Wright is known for her strong imagery, which is visible in this poem also. The poem itself is a metaphor for human suffering. The poem is about a convict-built jail, which was abandoned later. 
the effects of war and time has taken toll on the jail which is now in ruins the poet compares the prison to a flute being played because of the eerie sounds that the prison cells make and the wind is portrayed as if it is coming from the blue caves of south that means antarctic region the wind is also compared to an angry bee who is in search for prisoners like the bee the wind moves across the abandoned prison in search of prisoners it is actually hunting for prisoners the imagery used here creates the feeling of darkness rather than hope and the shadows the shadows and uh, the waves that fall upon these prison cells are portrayed as empty shell bone bear by judith right it is a very powerful imagery the sound wind makes is called a bitter song by judith right and those who lived there were devoid of warmth and security so the prison is broken and prisoners are blown away the prisoners lived in solitary confinements in their own cells so they couldn't breed or love or mate with each other the sound made by the wind is compared to their wail it is a very powerful imagery used by judith right the poem does not present us a cheerful and happy image Uh, rather it creates uh, the images of loneliness and suffering these feelings are brought out through strong imagery and judith right is well known for her strong imagery now we have come to the end of this session remember reading text is mandatory you will have to read the text and work on your own thank you